Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. And unlike the intro at the start of the show here, the last two or three weeks where we were kind of down a little bit about ice conditions, I'm really feeling so much more positive now as we start to see some colder weather. And one of the great things about today's show is I'm gonna get a chance now as we're waiting to build enough ice for guys to really get out there on the lakes to do some fishing with a guy that I've met that works at a resort who would typically be unavailable at this time of year because he would be neck deep in catering to ice anglers. And that's Josh Bullivant at Trapper's Landing on Leech Lake. And I've been working very closely with Josh in an attempt to put together the Leech Lake in-depth outdoors get together that's gonna take place 7th through 10th here in January. And as I've been working with Josh, I really got to like him quite a bit, and we've been trying to get out on the ice together. So this is the perfect opportunity for Josh and I to get out and do some fishing. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, well, they're gonna go to Leech Lake, right? Well, as I've got to know Josh, he very often will tell me that he never gets to fish anywhere but Leech Lake, as if that's actually a bad thing, right? So today we're gonna do something just a little bit different. We're gonna take Josh, we're gonna put him on a neutral body of water, one that we've never fished before, and we're gonna target a species that he almost never gets to chase on leech, which is the crappies. So today's show is really about two guys getting together to fish together for the very first time. And I also wanna introduce an idea of how this season, like no other, you really wanna pay attention to the fact that you want to be fishing according to the conditions and not the calendar. We're bearing down now into January. And we're starting what would typically be midwinter patterns for the fish that we chase out there on the ice. But the truth is, because of the warm weather, it's really more closely like first ice. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show how to locate crappies in a very typical Minnesota lake in a year when, you know, you should probably be looking in really deep water for basin roaming fish, but that's not what we're gonna find them. So do pay attention to the details of today's show. The next time you get out on the ice in 2016, you're probably gonna be faced with something very similar, and hopefully the tips we're able to share today will help you get on fish on your own body of water. I'll get the uh, rods rigged up. If you wanna get the auger out and just kinda punch some holes, we'll check depths and just kinda get a start. Okay. Man, first guy to catch a fish gets a buck, right? <laughs> yep. There he is. Nice. I'm gonna have to switch to some plastics, man. My attempts to uh, fish big and make it work is not working. Ooh, there's a nice one. Oh, there we go. Nice fish, bud. Had to make him chase. He kept on coming up for it and finally hit it right up there. Keep pulling it away from him. Not too bad. Put him back, see if we can get another one down there. There we go. Here he comes. He's gonna eat it. Gonna eat it? Oh yeah. Got him. There we go. At least that one come up and just throttle it. Awesome. How oh, they're supposed to. I was just, I've been messing around with spoons and you know different baits just to see what, what else they'd hit. And some days, it just has to be a jig in plastic. Not a giant crappie by any means, be a good eater but I am not in the mood to keep any fish today. So he gets a free pass. And what I like about where we're fishing here is we're just shallow enough where these fish should release really well. That fish was about 15 feet down, so I'm pretty confident that fish is gonna go back and, and live a long life, or at least till the next guy catches him. All right, back you go. 
All right, very simple presentation. It's the same one Josh is using, just in a different color. Uh, it's a, uh, a VMC tungsten jig with a wax tail, pre-rigged body on there. They come pre-rigged, you don't have to mess around with it. it, just comes down to finding the right color. We've got live bait with, but I'll be a very happy guy if I don't have to use any of that today. Usually, you don't have to. You might have to experiment a little bit with color and bait size, but when it comes to crappies through the ice, uh, I kind of consider live bait kind of an optional deal. Crappie crush, crappie crush, crappie crush, do it. There he is. Just had to find the right cadence there. Well, I'll be a little bit better crappie. If I can get my thumb in his mouth, he's starting to get the, to the size I like to catch him at. But uh, it's free pass Friday here at In-Depth Outdoors, so all right, fish, back you go. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. New from Yamaha, outboards that combine VMAX SHO performance and reliability with a 25-inch shaft link. Introducing the VMAX SHO 150 and 250 horsepower outboards. Yamaha's VMAX SHO outperforms two strokes on whole shot, weighs less, and boasts up to 12% better fuel economy than competitive two strokes. This means multi-species boaters can enjoy the benefits that have made the VMAX SHO famous. Stop into your Yamaha dealer today and experience the game-changing VMAX SHO now with a 25-inch shaft. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-thinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative tungsten chandelier jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, good for you, man. You're right, you gotta really work them. Ooh, almost lost him on the hole again. Right there. Ah, another nice little fish there. Let him go, we aren't keeping any today. So, see if we get another one down there. Yeah, you gotta really play with them right now. Yeah, I'm sure they'll get all charged back up again later in the day. But, you know, the important part is we can still catch them. That one definitely came up. He came up pretty five, six feet off the bottom again. There he is. There you go. Man, it's like you just gotta wait him out. Wait for him to get hungry or sick of looking at it, one of the two. There you go. A little bit better. We're climbing the ladder here. We keep doing that, it won't be long and we're gonna be into some pies. All right, let that guy go. See you later, fish. When we're fishing at these depths, these fish release really, really well. I mean, there's deeper water nearby that drops down to almost 30 feet. And at those depths, yeah, it's pretty tough to release crappies responsibly. Uh, here, I'm in 21 foot of water, and a lot of these fish are getting caught in 15, 16 foot of water, and they release really, really well. There we go. Another one there. These ones are a little bit higher up off the bottom now as I fumble. Put him back. See if we get another one. There we go. Got the hot hole, I guess. About the same size as the last few. Nice looking fish again. Stick him back down. There we go. Here. 
got him. Oh, there you go. Boy, he was reluctant. But in the end, I won out. Yeah. This is a decent fish. That's a chunky one. I didn't feel by picking him up that he's heavier. And he wanted all of that nymph. Pop that guy out. We've caught so many fish like this today. I mean, it's just really kind of amazing how many adult crappies you can have in a body of water like this. Well, back that fish goes. See you later, buddy. Two fish, three drops in this hole. That's not bad. There he goes. Now I came up and chased it like they're supposed to. We've been catching a lot of fish today on these uh, tungsten jigs. It's the pink chartreuse, the wax tail. They come in two packs. The nice part about the tungsten jigs when we use them, I'll put this guy back. When you get a school of fish down there, you can really send this down there fast. It gets back down to the fish. It's been working good today. We've cut a lot of fish on it. We've used a lot of different baits today, but this uh, little VMC works good. Gets back down there. Got a few fish down there. We'll see if we can get another one on it. Just gonna back down the hole. They get down there fast to them. That's about what you want, that speed. That tungsten falls a little bit faster than a normal jig of the same size. Now that we got all these holes punched out, we're kind of in a, a real common practice here for crappie fishermen is you don't even fish a hole unless you mark a fish. And then I've even got it a little bit more uh, strict. I'll mark fish on the bottom. And if they're real tight to the bottom, I won't fish those either. I'm really looking for crappies that are up off the bottom at least three feet. And uh, very often they're larger fish. Um, I've just, uh, the largest fish I've had today have been 12 feet off the bottom. So uh, anytime I mark a fish that's five or six feet off the bottom, I'm definitely gonna fish that mark. There he is. Well, that one feels a little better. This one was riding really high. <laughs> really high? Really high, he was about 12 foot down. Throwing his head around pretty good, all right. Come here, buddy. Got a mouthful of plastics in that VMC jig there. Let's see if I can get that fish unhooked. I'm gonna do it quick, because I got more fish down there waiting. That guy is a, just a nice, respectable crappie. I hope to catch a whole bunch more like that yet this afternoon. Back it goes. And I've got another one just waiting. This is where it gets fun, you know, when you're crappie fishing very often, all the work is on the front end. Uh, you gotta find the fish that very often spend very little time sitting still. And once you find crappies, typically you can catch them. We had to do a little refinement today with, with presentation. I started out fishing, you know, larger baits, uh, the rip and wrap, some spoons. And really what it can, uh, came down to is just fishing some smaller jigs and figuring out that plastic color. Uh, today it's pink, tomorrow it could be lime green. Who knows with these crappies. But when you get it right, the catching part gets really easy. No matter what moves you, Seafoam works. At Markham, we know being the leader in ice sonar performance doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Introducing the new iSeries line of flashers. Every model in our new iSeries line combines a bright and vivid display with Markham's advanced sonar technology to produce flasher sonar units that offer a larger display and increased viewing angles without compromising Markham's legendary sonar performance. This winter, don't settle for anything less than an iSeries flasher from Markham, the most powerful high-performance flasher sonar units ever built. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-thinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative tungsten chandelier jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. 
tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. No matter what moves you, Seafoam works. Still marking? Still marking. This one came in out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Oh, he's right on it. There he is. Good job, buddy. I got one high in the column here myself that I think I'll be uh, tangling with here in a second. There's another nice fish. They've really turned on here this last hour or so. We've found a lot of them. We've been just going around marking each hole. If you see one down there, you throw your jig down there. Get him down there. I got a few more down there, so let him go and see if we can't get another one. These crappies are awful lucky that uh, your wife only needed two. <laughs> two for a meal. She, she doesn't eat too much, so, and I don't like to freeze fish. Well, when you're, you're the manager of a resort on the shores of Leech Lake, you shouldn't have to. Nope. Fresh fish is always best anyways. Oh, here they come again. You get one of them and the rest of them all want it. There we go. The pink wax tail strikes again. The big question for me is why I haven't just switched over to that. <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta try something a little different. Something a little bit different. Another nice one. About the same size, they're all cookie cutter right out of here. See another one down there? I'm just gonna keep going and see how many I can get out of this hole. <laughs> You're on them now, man. Let, let them rip off that pink tail again. One dollar jig and a, uh, a 10 cent tail can catch a lot of fish in a day. You know, both Josh and I are using some of the, the tungsten jig heads from VMC and uh, very often when you uh, read something about fishing tungsten or watch a TV show and the, the hosts are using tungsten, they always say, love tungsten because you can fish it fast. And uh, really, I think guys get a little off base with what that means. I mean, you're not fishing it, moving your rod tip very fast or erratically most of the time. Uh, there's two reasons I like to fish tungsten. It sinks fast. It's a lot more dense for its uh, size. So for a lead head jig to weigh the same as tungsten has to be bigger. And uh, very often the, the panfish, particularly bluegills, will be uh, turned off by a really large jig head. And I think one of the other reasons that I really like tungsten is I don't like to take the time to scoop slush out of my holes. And those tungsten jig heads are really heavy, yet they're very small. So when I drop that uh, jig head onto the slush, it just punches right down through and I'm fishing versus having that jig hang up in that slush, which costs me time. And as these crappies are swimming through holes very often, it just comes down to just a matter of seconds where you'll mark a fish. And if you can't get a bait down to his nose almost immediately, it'll just keep swimming. And you end up playing this endless game of search where you're always just off by a few seconds. Oh, something got him all heated up. Didn't like that at all. There he is. There you go. <laughs> That's fun. The first time I worked him up, he just, something, he didn't like it. Dropped back down, turned around. We're kind of seeing some uh, nicer average size fish here. Hook just popped right out, which is perfect. And they're really getting active now. And that's what makes it so much fun when you can watch those fish screaming up and kind of interact with them on your electronics. I think that's what makes everybody's time out here on the ice so much more enjoyable. If I had to do this blind, Josh, I wouldn't have near as much fun. Without the electronics, I mean, there's no, no way. There you go. Fill some holes out behind you there. Yeah, we might want to just uh, put a ring around me here. Hey, you've had the hot hole here for a couple minutes. This fish just never sit still. See if I can't find one. I think one of the interesting things about uh, today's fishing is that uh, the conditions really don't match up with the calendar. And by that I mean, uh, you know, we're through the holidays now and uh, that's, you're getting close to midwinter. Uh, but yet we're really fishing on early ice. Uh, these lakes have just locked up within the last couple of weeks and uh, very often when I'm fishing pan fish or crappies, uh, early ice, I'll be looking in much shallower water. But what we're finding here is the fish are really in a uh, transition period. They're not clustered in the basin yet, but they're also not up shallow. These fish are kind of around the rim, the edge 
of the basin, yet they're really not out over that deeper water, which is where you would expect them by midwinter. So we're kind of in a transitional phase right now. We know where the crappies are gonna be. We'll get that first nasty cold front of the winter. We'll start getting more ice, and those fish will move out towards the deepest part of the lake. But right now, uh, 21 to 23 feet really seems to be the target zone. So even though it's early ice, we're seeing a pattern, and we're finding the fish at a depth range that typically would be associated with a pattern you'd find more towards midwinter. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, Strike Master was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. Strike Master, powerful, durable, reliable. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I got two more sitting down there. Oh yeah. My average size has gone up. Starting to pull some pretty solid fish. If you want one of these nips, Josh, I got a whole bag of them. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a few. I haven't had one in a while on this. Well, you get credit for finding the hot color and uh, maybe the nymph now is my contribution to the presentation. You know, we haven't had any giants, but we're starting to get some pretty nice fish. Back you go, buddy. Thank you for playing. Want me to get one out for you? I got it right in my pocket. Yeah, I better go grab one. That wax tail was really hot for you, but I think the nymph right now is a little better. Yeah, I think so. I haven't had anything in a while on it. Yeah, and you've caught a lot of fish on that one. That was pretty beat up. I think what it is is that wax tail, um, it's pretty big. This nymph is a lot more compact. It's not quite as long, and you're still going to get all the movement out of those appendages. So there's a, there's a spare body for you. Perfect, thanks. Well, I can tell that wax tail you just took off. You caught a lot of fish on that one, too. Pretty beat up. I mean, you can catch a lot of fish on them, but they don't last forever. It worked good for the time I used it. You know, something I've noticed here is um, the fish, because they're riding so high in the water now, you know, they're only 12 to 15 feet down. Uh, they don't seem to be right under the hole, but when I put my transducer in, it kind of goes in and it swings, and I'll see those fish off to the edge. So I'll, even though I'm not seeing a fish directly underneath the hole, I'll just kind of give that transducer a swing and very often, did you see that? Yeah, I saw one right there. Yep. Right on the edge. There he I'm is. I'm going to catch him. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But just one of those just little tiny little tricks where you might not see him directly under the hole and if all you did is just dipped and walked away. Yeah. You'd never know. For all I know, he's one of the fish I caught and released already. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Hey, there you go. Good one? <laughs> Good enough to get your hands wet anyway, right? Yeah, got to do that sometimes, you know. Well, Another the same, same fish today. Fun to catch, though. Fun watching them come up on the grass. Go back down. Hurry. You got more waiting? Yeah, about three or four there. I'm seeing plenty of fish, but they're not nearly as active as they was about two hours ago. Yeah, you gotta kind of really work them up. The fish right near the bottom, that bottom two or three feet, it's not even worth messing with them. No, they just sit there. And that's so very common for lakes in this area. Uh, the fish that you mark on the bottom, it's so attractive to just drop a jig down on them. 
you, know, you may see three, four, five fish in that bottom two or three foot of the water column, but those are very often just completely inactive fish. And what you're looking for are those fish that are just kind of actively roaming, swimming, much further up off the bottom. And it can be, you know, we're, I'm in 21 foot of water right now. Ideally, today, when I'm marking fish that come in at about 15 uh, foot down, those are the most active fish. So those fish are six, seven foot off the bottom. There's not as many of them, and they certainly don't hold still as long as those fish that you'll find right near the bottom. But very often they're larger and far more aggressive. There he is. I've got one here at 10 foot down. That's where this one was. Real high, huh? Yeah, really, really high. Those are usually better fish. Mm, about the same as today. So much for that theory, huh? Yeah. You'd think they'd be a little bigger hiding up there. There he goes. Another one hanging out at that same range. Oh, there's mine. There he is. Oh yeah. Nice oh, one. Yeah. Wow. There we go. That's a very nice crappie, and he has that nymph gone. <laughs> Gonna have to go fetch that one. Had to make that one uh, bite, kind of find the best dance moves there to get it to commit. But once it finally did, it come right up and just inhaled it way down in there. I was expecting a much bigger fish when I first uh, set the hook. What fantastic action here today. And we're getting some really nice fish here in the afternoon. So it's, all in all, it's been a great day. See you later. So how does it feel to get away from leech, if only for a day? Oh, it feels great. I don't get to leave there very often. Not that you're complaining, right? Not complaining. I very rarely have to leave that lake, but it's cool getting to explore a local lake up here, doing something different. Kind of feel like I got you paroled or something. <laughs> <laughs> Take you out on work release. Oh, it feels good though. <laughs> so I hope everybody really enjoyed today's show. And although we focused on crappies, really keep this in mind with any species you're targeting this winter. You know, that calendar says January and very often guys will be looking to offshore humps for walleyes or real deep weed lines for those bluegills. Or in today's show, in most January shoots, I would be looking for crappies in the basin of the lake. But everybody saw where we ended up catching those fish. So keep in mind, don't be fishing from the calendar, do be fishing to the condition. So from Josh and I, thanks Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.